And tonight on our great, great American panel, he served in the Nixon and Reagan administrations, led the presidential efforts of Jack Kemp, Ross Perot, and Mike Huckabee. Republican strategist Ed Rollins is here. He was Bill Bradley's deputy campaign manager, Fox News contributor. Jacques DeGroff is back, and she is a former reporter and host on Fox Sports and currently the host of Mark Levin's favorite show, NBC's Poker After Dark, model TV personality, Leanne Tweeden. Good to see you guys. Good to see you. How's everybody? How's married life? Good, thank you. Congratulations. An Air Force hero. Thank you very much. I think much. I, didn't I uh, downgrade him last time? No, you just, you said he was a Navy pilot. Well, so Navy, <laughs> you know, he's a great American, all right? Thank you. All right, um, a lot of talk about who... I find this this argument that this is a lackluster field of the Republicans. Barack Obama is going to sail into uh, into the White House. The interesting thing to me is only 36 percent of poll recently to say that they want him reelected. So there are a couple of head-to-head -head matchups out here. Let's put them up on the screen. McClatchy Maris poll, and the first one has uh, Barack Obama and Mitt Romney. Pretty much a statistical dead heat, 46-45. Huckabee and uh, Obama, 48-43. Um, Ed, you run a lot of presidential campaigns. So it's way too early. Way too early. Uh, first of all, th th this field will have some very, some very tested politicians, and whoever comes out is going to be a, probably a former governor uh, or present governor uh, who've been elected statewide. They may not be national figures, but they will be very aggressive and very good candidates. And this is about contrast. The president could not put 270 electoral votes together today. No Republican could either. So there's a long ways to go. It's a year before we'll even have a nominee, and there's plenty yeah. of time to do this. You know, and that's the point. Right now, Obama can't win Pennsylvania, according to the polls. Right now, he can't win Florida in the polls. Way too early, Jacques, but not good signs for the White House, and the economy is not getting better, especially in light of the report by Standard & Poor's this week. Well, I'd, I'd hold the pity party just now because if you look at the Republican polls in particular, first of all, to become the president of the United States, you've got to win your party's nomination. You've got to get delegates. And right now, we're experiencing the flavor of the month, and his name is Donald Trump. There's not one, there's not <laughs> one announced candidate now. Not one. But, but, but out, of, out of the ones who, who are murmuring and, making, and posturing, it doesn't look good for the Republican Party that a Donald Trump... How could it not Trump look can, good when you don't have one announced because candidate? Because if you look at other polls, Donald Trump is dominating the conversation for this minute. All and right. while he's doing that, other people are having problems raising money, getting attention, and getting their policies. Uh, they don't, I'm telling you, they don't want attention right now, most of them. What do you think? I agree. I mean, Donald Trump, he's the king of, of getting media. We talked about this last time I was on. I mean, he loves to go out there and put out buzzwords and, and get attention. But uh, that's neither here nor there. I mean, if, you know, come back to the Romney, Romneys and the Huckabees that are out there. You know, I think that... It, it is early. It's a year early. I mean, I'm gonna. Everybody is already gonna be in media overkill by the time it actually comes down no, to no, the Republicans making nominees. This is my favorite time. This is my favorite time. This is a favorite job of time 24 hour media. I love it's it. Sort of overkill, but you know, people are just you know exploring exploratory committees and mm -hmm. seeing if they want to run, dipping their toes in the water. Right now, these numbers, uh, you really can't. You know, tell. I, but, but stay on Trump for a second. I, I I've been saying this about Donald Trump in that he is. I think he's giving every candidate a lesson. If you fight hard, people, you're energizing people. On the other hand, he's got a lot of problems. Conservatives are scrutinizing his record. I mean, he once supported a millionaire's tax. He supported uh, nationalized health care. He was pro-choice. Uh, so the kilo decision, he was on the wrong side of that. So he's going to have to answer questions to get the conservative nominee. I, I, had, the last, the I had the last billionaire who ran, Ross Perot. Uh, and, and <laughs> Ross Perot in June. And when yeah, the you primaries, gave us Bill Clinton. Uh, Thanks a lot. When, when, uh, <laughs> right. uh, unfortunately, President Bush gave us Bill Clinton. At the end of the day, when the primaries were over, Ross Perot was at 39%. He was in first place. He went in a course of six weeks. Uh, uh, I always say one of my greatest contributions to American politics with a major assist from him. We went from 39 to 16. Once we got scrutinized, once people started treating us like a candidate, the world changes. Once uh, Donald Trump is treated like a candidate, a serious candidate, and measured against other candidates, it gets difficult. It for gets him. very difficult. But, but here's the challenge to the Republican Party. Some of the things that Donald Trump uh, are saying right now are finding traction within an element of the Republican Party that are not, that are not leading to a path to victory. So the longer you talk about Obama, President Obama's birth certificate, the longer you talk about that, you're not talking about 10 other things. And it's dominating the conversation. You know what? And it's going to create we problems plenty of time. Just like we had plenty, the media had plenty of time to ask about not Bill Ayers, which they think. asked one, not, time. Not in a, one time. Not in a billion dollar presidential. You know what? You, 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 you're wrong, because if this was 2012, I'd agree, may agree with you, but it's not it's 2012. And he's 2012. not even running for president yet. I, I, no. don't, I don't 
even actually think he's going to. I think he makes plenty of money in the private world, in the private sector, and that's what he's good at. He's good at Celebrity Apprentice. Hey, John Rich. Uh, but you know, no, I'm I, voting I, for John Rich too. Me too. He's right, doing go great, ahead. the cowboy. But uh, but I just don't think that he really is going to take on politics because I don't think he's going to win the nomination, and he doesn't want to go into a losing battle. But I think I like that he brings. I like his dialogue fight. Dialogue to the forefront. I like his fight. I like his combativeness. He's, he's an iconoclast, right. and he's fearless. And Sarah Palin is fearless. Uh, Michelle Bachman has shown a fearlessness that I find attractive. And for any candidate that's running, I would advise them well, to follow fear, that fear model. Is important, but what's really important is leadership. And where there's a that's real a vacuum, and where I totally agree with you, the, the people today want a leader. Obama may be still likable, but he's not a leader. He is not in the I agree with you. years. In and, way over and, his head. And whoever basically can lead that charge and convince that they have an answer to these very significant problems All will right. basically do very well. Uh, time to check in with Greta Van Susteren for a sneak peek at what's coming up in 19 short minutes. Greta. Well, Carl Rove is here. He'll be going down the record in a moment. General Bob Scales is here to talk about Libya. What a horrible crisis there. And uh, here's a tease for you. Donald Trump and Charlie Sheen. Are they working together? That's your tease. <laughs> I hate to tell you this, but that's our next topic. And I don't Ouch. want to steal your thunder. That's so unfair. Ouch. I swear. And by well, the way, I got it, it right here. Huh? We're going to do it differently. I have my, by the way, they finally bought me a blue card. I got one. You got a blue card? I do. All right. More of the you great know, it American doesn't reflect the cameras. Panel. That's Greta why I have will have an interesting take on it. And as is tradition, when Leanne is here, she takes us out. And our great American panel continues. And we continue now with our great American panel. Just when you think government, we discussed this a little bit last night, can't get any more out of control, and the nanny state can't get any worse. You know, we've, had, we've gone through this period where kids play sports, and, and both my kids are into sports, and they don't keep score because you can't, have, you can't offend the kids. They can't be you winners can't or winner. losers. You yeah. can't have a winner. Uh, then the next step is, well, some of these sports are dangerous, so they ban dodgeball. Now they're banning, and they tried to ban in New York, and then because of public outcry, they pulled back just yesterday. Wiffle ball, tag, ring alivio, you know, all the games that we all played as kids. And I'm thinking, who, if they banned salt in New York, you, you, you can't smoke in a park in New York if you're a smoker. Smoking is not good, by the way. Right. But if you want, I mean, there's no freedom anymore because the government's going to control every aspect of your life. That bug, you know, that bugs me because I, I do fall on the libertarian side. And it's like, you know, let me make choices for myself and my own family. If I don't want to play dodgeball, I won't play dodgeball. But don't tell me what to do. You know, a lot of those sports growing up taught us a lot of things. They taught us socializing. They taught us there are winners and losers in life. Because you know what? When your kid gets out into the real world and realizes there are winners and losers, then what happens? His entire exactly. world is going to be crushed as an adult. And as if they're not keeping score either right. on their own. I mean, I, it, I mean, everyone gets a, you know, thanks for playing. Nobody yeah. won, wins or loses. And why do we even keep score in basketball and football? Because and we're NHL, all equal, you know? Jacques. This is all spread the wealth around. We should all have the same amount of money, the same size house, the we same have, cars we, we should drive, we, we it should be have, equal. We all have equal rights, but if they're going to end tag, then we've got to draw the line thank somewhere. You. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. But actually, in New York City, I mean, it, it's extended to this bike lane uh, fiasco. Yeah. Uh, they where, built bike lanes bikes nobody uses. More, bike riders, the six of them, have more rights than the 20 million people in the metro area. Yeah. So I, parks, for example, do you like salt? I, I, I like salt more than it's healthy for me. All right, exactly, right. me too. And when I go to a restaurant in New York, you have to ask for salt because they don't allow you to put it on. Just like I don't want to go to McDonald's and read how many calories are in my Big Mac and French fries. I get it. It's not. I shouldn't eat it every day, but you know now we can't even give a kid's toy in a McDonald's pack. Uh, I'm, the wrong, I'm the wrong one. Fifty years ago, and 50 pounds lighter, I was a boxer that had 167 fights. Were you really? Right. So I don't uh, dodgeball to me was pretty genteel. Yeah. Uh, so right. That's, and if you weren't in my town where you grew up, you basically had better be a fast runner. Fast <laughs> right. talker or a fast runner. All right, let me go to the, the new Black Panther Party. Um, there is going to be what they're calling a day of rage, including a protest of non-black businesses around the country. Now, I'm sitting here listening to this, and I'm thinking, you, you've got to be kidding me. And this has been, an, this is a number of groups over the years have buy black campaigns. Is that racist? Uh, well, you, 
I don't think it's racist. I think there are racists involved, though, uh, both the Black Panther and, and a lot of the power movements, and certainly white racists. At the end of the day, I see nothing wrong with Jewish people buying from Jewish merchants, African Americans buying from their community. I think to a certain extent that's what America was about. But we are a melting pot, and I think to a certain extent, if you start saying no one can come in and you're exclusive, uh, yeah, but, but, th but doesn't that th 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 we're all Americans? First shock. I mean, I would never not go to a store because the the person wasn't Irish. I, I don't. The mentality escapes me. Uh, different cultures have different ways of functioning, and how we support one another and encourage one another, I think, is part of the American way. But we live in a global world, and uh, the, our economies if, are. If I would only buy at a white are, store. And if I had a, if I had a day right. where I would quote only go to white businesses, isn't that racist? I think that's racist. The, the fact of the matter is that the reason that we have many MWBE policies in this country is because that there are too many places. MWBE. Minority and women-owned business enterprises. The reason we have programs to promote those businesses. But don't they want me as a customer? If you listen, I'll explain. Yeah. The reason those those categories exist is because there are too many places that exclude businesses that are owned by people of color, that exclude businesses that are owned by women in this country today. Leah. You know, I think it does have some racial overtones, but I, I think if you have a business and you have a good product. I don't care who owns the store. I don't care where you get it. I'm not sure that, I mean, do the people, the, the, the blacks that own the shop, are, are they um, making their product too? Because they're probably getting a lot of their products from China. So it's but not even like it's all they're specifically made. protesting non-black businesses. No, right. And I think that's wrong. Uh, but I think, you know, Americans will see through that and they're still going to shop where they want to shop. And, they're, you know, they're going to go. If, if that one particular place has a great deal on something that I can get someplace else for, for more expensive. Of course, I'm going to go there. I don't think it matters, but I think that's the wrong message to be sending out, be sending out because you're right. They're not going to make money from their own people that are going to go to those shops anyways. They're going to get money from you and me and everybody else in the community no, that well want to shop there. All right. The ultimate color is green. Wherever Amen. Amen. And that's exactly and we're right. We're all Americans. So, we exactly let's make right. sure banks right. do the same thing. All right. And uh, that's it. Uh, by the way, we're going to let Leanne throw us out. But can you afford four more? We're going to get a new conservative group saying no way. And its chairman, Governor Pataki, uh, joins us. But first, Leanne throws us out. more money than any other nation in the history of the world, a staggering $14.3 trillion, and one group of frustrated conservatives has had enough. They've launched a new organization called No American Debt. Now, this aims to advance the national dialogue about America's debt crisis and challenge President Obama's plan to tackle this. It will also keep the GOP 2012 candidates in check by asking them to propose actual solutions for our nation's toughest problems. Joining me now with more on the uh, No American Debt is the organization's chairman, former governor of the great state of New York, Governor Pataki. How are you, sir? Good Sean, to see great you. great being with you. $14.3 trillion. Uh, it's not sustainable. It's a crime against the future, our children. Uh, and by the way, this administration, by the end of its first four years, will have run up more debt than the entire history of the United States before President Obama took office. In one term. In one term. Uh, and when you look, you mentioned we're going to criticize uh, President Obama's plan. He really doesn't have a plan. Uh, we're looking at uh, more than $1.5 trillion of debt this year. 1.65. 1.65 trillion. Uh, and we had a couple of bold groups come out with solutions. You had uh, the Bowl Simpson, Simpson Commission. Mm -hmm. The president's own commission came out with some very solid recommendations. He walked away from it. You had Congressman Ryan come up with a very bold initiative to cut $6 trillion out of the deficit. And instead of engaging in dialogue, the president engaged in political demagoguery and criticized the plan. We can't let him get away with that. It's too important, and we're going to be out there to hold people accountable if they don't deal with well, it. Well, I, I am especially outraged. And we talked about this in our first segment tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he says, well, Republicans are telling old people to fend for themselves, kids with Down syndrome, autism to fend for themselves. And then he said the collapse of the Minneapolis Bridge is because of infrastructure problems when we know exactly the opposite. It was a design flaw from the beginning. That's exactly right. And by the way, we borrowed eight. $818 billion to try to deal with infrastructure, and we didn't get any results from it. Yeah. One of the reasons we have the debt. But uh, what he did when Congressman Ryan came out with this plan is not worthy of a grade B political candidate, let alone the President of the United States. And uh, we need the President to engage uh, intelligently with 
the House Republicans, with the Senate, uh, and try to solve this problem now. And uh, we haven't seen that. We're going, we, we did this uh, last year with Obamacare when uh, it was rammed through and they wanted the American people to forget about it. We made sure it was an issue throughout the campaign. We're going to make sure the American people understand how important dealing with the deficit is right now. But, but it, I agree with you. The Ryan plan is a serious plan, $6.2 right. Right. The The recommendations, Simpson Bowles and the Deficit Reduction Commission, was serious. It's a serious plan. Right. And, they, and they're all talking about dealing with entitlements, and the president's demagogy. So how do, you have an how do you have an intelligent discussion with somebody that's going to treat it this way? You can't. And that's why we need to get the president, hold his uh, feet to the fire and make him accountable uh, and work to actually come right. up with a plan. But does that mean that now that the debt ceiling vote is just a couple of weeks away, mm -hmm. should Republicans say, no, we're not going to raise the debt ceiling? Obama, as senator in 2006, said it was irresponsible. Well, Obama said ceiling. a lot of things as a senator that he's doing the exact opposite of now that he's president. But we can't allow the United States to default on our debt. But we should look at it as an opportunity to take a step to reduce these deficits. Why would it be, um, I, and I'm just playing devil's advocate, sure. why? Why not say we're either going to cut two, three trillion dollars or we're not going to raise it because we need to show the world and standard and poor's that we mean business? I think we c should cut two or three trillion. I think the House Republicans will engage uh, Obama and Harry Reid and trying to do that. But if it doesn't happen at the end, we can't default on our debt. The interest costs right now are close to a half trillion dollars a year. If those interest rates go up, it's going to just hurt the American taxpayer. If we lose our AAA rating, interest rates will go up well, as you and know, for everybody. As you know, uh, Standard & Poor's just yeah. uh, the other day said uh, they put a negative wash on American credit. And China now is very aggressively trying to make their currency replace the dollar as the global currency. So this is a real crisis. We can't wait to 2013. We need to get serious about the deficit right now. And that's what we're, our organization is going We're running out of time. Make people uh, time. Are you thinking of running for president? I'm not running for president. Uh, I think this is an extraordinarily important issue. We're going to focus on this. But, Sean, I've been around politics enough to know you never say never. All right. Uh, Governor Pataki, good to see you. Thanks so much for being with us. We appreciate it. And that is all the time we have left this evening. As always, thank you for being with us. Let not your heart be troubled. The news continues. Greta Van Susteren is standing by now to go live on the record. Thanks for being with us. See you tomorrow night. Greta.